Hello students and welcome to episode 43 of Max Online Video Lessons and also this is part three of our flower conversation and this will be the final flower uh, topic. Um, I thought it's a good it's a good time to end because the flowers are starting to bloom. Spring has arrived so we can actually enjoy flowers in real life. We can go outside and uh, we can enjoy uh, watching, viewing, touching, smelling, and experiencing all these beautiful flowers in real life without talking about them. So this will be the conclusion to our three uh, three class flower topic. And um, I really hope you've enjoyed the last two week, uh, the last two classes as I have. Uh, so just to just a review uh, in the first flower part one, we talked about uh, why people like flowers. We talked about the psychology and the reasons why um, people really appreciate flowers. And we learned some really interesting stuff in that class. And in part two, we talked about the flower economy, international flower shipping, and where flowers come from. And this week, we are going to focus on traditions and ceremonies that use flowers and what they symbolize. So today we're talking about kind of a deeper meaning of flowers. What do flowers mean to different cultures? And um, I hope you guys really like the lesson. Let's get started. This topic is called Flowers Part 3, Traditions and Culture with Flowers. Spring is coming soon. The weather is warming up, and you might be seeing some new flowers blooming around your neighborhood. Across the street from my house, there are some nice plum trees starting to bloom. This week, we will finish our three-part video conversation on the topic of flowers by talking about how flowers affect culture. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I adjusted my microphone and lost my place. Okay. We'll be talking about how flowers affect culture and the relationship between celebrations and flowers. Flowers play a major part in many countries' cultures. They have unique meaning in different places, and each country has their own national flower. Do you know your country's national flower? My country's national flower is the rose, it was made the national flower in 1986 by President Ronald Reagan, who said, More often than any other flower, we hold the rose dear as the symbol of life and love and devotion, of beauty and eternity. In today's essay, let's look at the cultural effect that flowers have on different traditions around the world. And let's start in Europe, where flowers have been used as celebrations for thousands of years. Anywhere between February and June, uh, sorry, February to June, many countries in Western Europe have a huge festival called the Flower Festival. Uh, France holds their festival in the middle of February, right when winter is ending. And the flower that they use to celebrate their festival is the mimosa. The mimosa flower is a long yellow flower that looks like a ray of sunshine. It symbolizes the sun, the message that spring is on its way. And it also is a symbol for hope that even though winter is hard, it will soon come to an end. People in the south of France have parades, marching bands fill the streets with the sound of music, and the floats ride down the street while the people cheer. The winner of the best float is crowned Queen of Mimosa. Um, okay, let's move further east to the country of India and look at their religious holiday called Holi. Holi is a Hindu holiday that celebrates spring, love, and new life. For some people, this is a religious holiday, but for most Indians, it is a holiday of fun. Communities come together and sing, 
dance, and throw colorful powder on each other. It is also called the Festival of Colors. Where do all these colored powders come from? They come from flowers, of course. The colors of holy are a promise of blooming flowers, of good harvests in springtime, and of an abundance of nature and creation. Some flowers associated with holy are the tesu flower, which comes from the palash tree, which are bright orange and red flowers that look like fire. The tesu flower is the main flower used for making the powder which is used in the celebration of holy. Another flower is the turmeric flower, which is purple and long. Holy sounds like a really fun celebration. Flowers are not only culturally important on holidays, but also in many traditions all over the world. In the wedding ceremony, it is common in most countries for the bride to have a bouquet of flowers. The wedding bouquet is considered to bring happiness and satisfaction in marriage, while the ribbon the, which, uh, with which the bouquet is tied with symbolizes fellowship and a connection to her husband. In many Spanish countries, the brides have a second bouquet. The first bouquet is given to one of her bridesmaids, as it is done in most Western countries, but the unique second bouquet is given to the Virgin Mary at a Catholic church altar. The bride gives Mary a bouquet of flowers as a way of saying goodbye to her connection to Mary and the starting of a new life with her husband. Because of this gesture, it is believed that the Virgin Mary gives her blessing to the new wedded couple and becomes a guardian of their relationship. Okay, finally, let's take a look at the Far East and discover the interesting relationship that China has with bamboo. In traditional Chinese culture, bamboo is representative of oriental beauty. The value and beauty of bamboo trees have been used in numerous paintings, poems, calligraphy, and other artworks. Bamboo is also given as a gift to friends and family members in China, but the number of bamboo stalks, stalks means the kind of tree, the, the, the stem, uh, the number of bamboo stalks is very important because they have different meaning. For example, giving a potted bamboo plant with two stalks represents love. Three stalks are good luck, five is wealth, six through ten is all about levels of luck, and finally 21 stalks is a powerful blessing upon the person. Bamboo plants with four stalks are avoided. Because, similar to Japan, four is symbolic with death. The next time you see a bamboo, uh, sorry, the next time you see some bamboo in the flower shop, check how many stalks it is and you can find out what that gift will be used for. What we can see from all these examples is that each country celebrates in similar ways. They want to have fun and be happy and connect with the people around them. But they use flowers and symbolism in many different ways. How does your country use flowers in various celebrations and ceremonies? With spring coming very soon, we will all be able to enjoy flower gazing and appreciating flowers all around us. All right, that's it, guys. That's the ending of the essay. Uh, and that's the ending of part three of the flower, uh, the flower topics that we've been discussing online. So um, let's 
let's talk a little bit about the culture of flowers. I know Japan has so many cultures and celebrations and traditions about flowers. And I didn't want to talk about Japan in my essay because I want because because part most of the questions in the discussion are all about Japan and I want you guys to answer those questions for me tell me about Japan's flower festivals and traditions tell me about what flowers mean in Japan what symbolism do they have in Japan and so on let's look at some of the vocabulary for this essay uh, the first vocab word is ray a ray of sunshine a ray is a line of light that comes from the sun. The next word is floats. Uh, now, keep in mind, float is a verb that means like to rise up or to fly, to float. Uh, but floats can also be a noun and it's actually part of a parade, a parade float. And that is a platform on top of a car or truck carrying a display in a procession. And procession means um, like a, a parade or a fair or something like that. Uh, number three is associated. Uh, this means a person or thing connected with something else. In our article, we said some flowers associated with holy are the tesu flower and the so-and-so flower so this means a, a thing a flower connected with something else holy so a flower connected with holy associated number four is the word numerous numerous means great in number many in our essay we said the value and beauty of bamboo trees have been used in numerous paintings, poems, calligraphy, and other artworks. So a great many, a great number. Uh, okay, number five, the last vocab word is the word gazing, gazing. To gaze at something means to look steadily and intently especially in admiration, surprise, or thought. So in the essay, we, we talk about enjoying flower gazing. So this means staring intently at flowers in admiration, surprise, or thought. Those are our vocab words for this week. And uh, you guys can practice those words. Try to use them in sentences and try to add them to your vocabulary connection. Uh, all right, let's finally look at the discussion questions for this week. There are five discussion questions. You can answer any of those. Uh, if you want to just answer a few, that's fine. Or you can answer all of them. But I will be sure to respond to your questions and give you my thoughts on your answers. So let's look at question number one. Tell me about a celebration or tradition that uses flowers in your country. Okay, this is the big one. This is the one that I want you guys to tell me about uh, if, if, if you made an essay or a paragraph on Japan, one celebration or tradition that uses flowers. Describe what is the celebration? What do people do? What do they use the flowers for? What do the flowers mean? And so on. Okay, number two. What is your national flower? Why is that your national flower? Okay, what is it and why is that chosen as your national flower? Number three. Do flowers have symbols or mean something in your country? So do flowers have any special meaning or any kind of symbolic meaning? Um, uh, for example, like does a white flower mean something different than a red flower? Uh, or does a rose mean something and a tulip mean something different? Uh, so tell me about those symbols and meanings. Number four. Which celebration or tradition from the essay would you like to participate in? So we talked about four, um, four different ceremonies or traditions. Uh, we talked about uh, the flower festival in France. We talked about 
Holi in India. Uh, we mentioned a Spanish wedding. And we also talked about the Chinese culture of giving bamboo as a present. So which uh, celebration or tradition would you like to participate in the most? And finally, number five, do you think your country has a strong connection to nature? Why or why not? This is kind of like a final question on all three weeks. We talked about flowers for all three weeks. We also talked about growing vegetables, gardening, and uh, just in general, we talked a lot about nature. So this is kind of the final question about all of those topics. Do you think your country has a strong connection to nature? Why or why not? Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, this has been a really exciting three uh, classes talking about flowers. I've learned so much about flowers from my students. Uh, you guys are always very good at teaching me the names and, uh, and the styles of different flowers. And I really appreciate learning all of that useful information. So thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to hearing your answers for part three, traditions and culture with flowers as well. That's all for today's class. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.